because the Barentsburg it is a little piece of huge Russia here. So, once more time, my name Julia. I'm from here, so I just work here, not was born here, and I'm Russian. question from my guests how are Russian came here so it is Norwegian land right and what Russian do well the questions is going to the sixth, beginning of 16th century and it be began from Russian northernmost trappers who were named Pomor so Pomor were living long time and seashores in northernmost Russian areas uh, nowadays we call that areas as a murmansk and arhangelsk so from that part of russia the trappers were going by the special boat to the uh, northern seas to the uh, greenland coast and once upon a time they missed their way because the wind and uh, uh, rough waves and they came here to this beautiful island archipelago and they got the name for this place Ede Grumant. So Grumant same name for our company and why Grumant? Because Greenland it is a bit high in pronunciating in the Russian language. So first Greenland became the Grunland and then Grumant. So according to some historical information for sure not all Russian people came here first in beginnings of 16th century. <laughs> a bit later in beginnings of 19th century Dutch people from Nespico saw how the coal is going to the uh, surface of the mountain and they came here and established here small settlement and after William Barentsburg, Barents, they gave the name for this settlement as the Barentsburg. So here, Ugal, it is not Google. <laughs> Ugal, it's a call in Russian language. So in 1931, they got this property. They got the Pyramidon property, Grumman property, and Tundra Bagiman's property as well. So four property here on Spitsbergen were, uh, were sold for Russian people, for Soviet people. Now we are Russian all. So in 1931, First people from Soviet side, Russian, Ukrainian, Tajikistan and um, Moldovian came here and started to build here everything. So first building, which you saw that when we were climbing up by the st stairways. So that building came from the beginning of uh, uh, 20th century. So from 1931, as I said. In five years, that people were established here everything. So develop here everything. So Canteen was came here, then the consulate came here, the school and kindergarten, so the uh, dormitories for the local people, everything were constructed very well. So the Barentsburg as pyramid and as well were wanted to stay here a long time and be a very uh, beautiful settlement because in Soviet period uh, administration of this place decided to do here as a communism case and to show for neighbors, first of all for Norwegians, that the Soviet people are very, you know, happiest one and the lucky one and everything. But unfortunately in 1942, I think you know, the Second World War came and two uh, um, warships from German side, Turkey and Schoenholz destroyed here everything. So everything became the earth and only one building, this one, which in front of you were survived. So that building uh, nowadays is under Norwegian and Russian protect protection because it is only one which came from 1931. And Longibian and Grumman and Barentsburg as well, everything were destroyed. Only this building is survived. So it is a former canteen. And here it is the very shortest way between mine and the canteen. In a Soviet period here, there is a system all inclusive for 24 hours. So all miners in 
every every time in the day or in the night could come to the canteen and have whatever they wanted to eat to drink but alcohol was prohibited only so everything was included here all right so uh, let's go to the downtown our huge settlement <laughs> and you will see how it was done part of our settlement, historical part of the Barbaro. And here from this side you will find four different types of architecture. So first type, there's a green buildings in front of you with two floors. So that buildings came here in the golden age of Barensburg. So it is approximately 60, 70 year of last century. So you can imagine, then it was Soviet period here, so same ages, 60s, 70s. Here, the, uh, uh, here, the people, the amount of the people who were staying here was more than 2,000. And nowadays it was very increased. So nowadays we have here not more than 300 people only. So you can imagine how in the Soviet period, a lot of buildings like that, more than 50, were staying in, um, in uh, in all settlements property so nowadays we demolished everything for sure because we don't need too many houses anymore and we just save it here for you just to show as a museum under open sky It is uh, the biggest husky farm in all Svalbard, in all Spitsbergen. So nowadays we have uh, there more than 80 dogs with a small puppies. So maybe next time then you come here into Barinsburg for a bit longer period than just two hours. You can be welcome to the husky farm to see, to make a farm with, you know, dog and uh, puppies. You are always, always welcome. Then, if you look to the up, here in front of you, you will see the gazon, gazon which now uh, became the yellow. But in Soviet period, here people brought the fertile soil from Murmansk side, from Russian side, by cargo ship, and also they brought here the uh, grass seeds. So here it was a beautiful green gazon. Nowadays, unfortunately, everything is lost. But in Soviet period, you can imagine how beautiful it was here. If you look 